All right, in this chapter, we're dealing with more program music, but instead of these larger forms like the program symphony with really dark and twisted endings where people die and witches dance, instead of that, this is incidental music, right? Music that's written kind of as the background to a play or to accompany acting and speaking and dialogue uh, on stage during a, during a play. Uh, so we've got two examples in this chapter. The first is a great piece uh, by Felix Mendelssohn, his music to William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, his music, his incidental music that he wrote for this, is still incredibly uh, popular, especially the overture and the scherzo. They're played many times globally by orchestras. They're on every violin audition for any orchestra in the world. You have to learn those notes. It's hard. Um, so it's incredibly popular. I really want to focus on the second piece, though, the Peer Gint Suite by Edvard Grieg. This is a great example of musical nationalism, one of these isms that pops up during the 19th century. It's a way to kind of be, I don't know, kind of like America first, but with music. And really, you're from Norway if you're Edvard Grieg, right? You're, you're Scandinavian. But what you're trying to showcase is your country's music, your country's kind of folk tales, folk legends, and folk music idioms through a piece of concert music. It's a way to celebrate your heritage and kind of, you know, send out your heritage or share it with the world. So in Edvard Grieg's piece, Peer Gint, um, You've got two pieces. The first piece is called The Morning Mood. And if you've ever watched old Bugs Bunny cartoons, uh, this is kind of like the birds chirping and you're waking up and stretching before Elmer Fudd comes in and tries to kill the wabbit. Um, so that's that first movement. It should be a tune that's familiar to you. Similarly, the last movement, In the Hall of the Mountain King, should be familiar to you. Bum, 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 bum. It's a really popular tune. It's in Fantasia. Um, and it's a great little story because basically Peer Gint is being chased by a mountain troll, right? And as the piece goes on, he has to run fat. He's tiptoeing. Right? And then he gets caught and he has to run faster and faster and faster and faster and it accelerates all the way to the end. Um, what's also interesting, if you've ever seen the uh, cartoon movie called Trolls, you will know that the trolls or the, the bad guys who eat the trolls, they're called Bergens. And here's a little interesting note, a right? little bit of trivia for you. In the original German translation of in the hall of the mountain king it's was written as this in dem halle von bergen 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 you see what they did there they made those bad guys who eat the little hairy troll dolls bergens based off of this tune and when you go back and watch that film or go just do a just do a, a youtube link or youtube search for something about whipping their hair i think is what it has to do with um, they use this tune. It's the main tune. It's got a trap beat and it comes into a really big hip hop thing, but it's the same tune. So you get to see a little bit of classical music in pop culture, nationalism from Scandinavia, making it into silly kid movies in 2016, whenever that movie came out. Still fun.